Hey everybody, it's Phil Struzillo from Select Software Reviews back with our HR Tech Awards series. And today we're talking to Mara Funder, who's a Director of Communications at EBS, who's nominating a colleague, Christina Harrell, the Director of HR Technology, who kind of went above and beyond for a company to help them do a market map of the HRIS landscape select a solution that was specifically tailored for their use case. And then lastly, really going above and beyond to get the right price for this new HRIS. Mara, thanks so much for joining us. Do you mind just sort of giving a little bit of background on why you nominated Christina? Yeah, absolutely. So Christina, I mean, not just in the example that I shared in my nomination, but with all of our clients, Christina just always goes above and beyond. She is super responsive to our clients, even you know outside of normal working hours. So outside of the normal 8.30 to 5, which we do, you'll find Christina on Slack at like 10 p.m. She'll be emailing at 9.30, 11 p.m. And she has two young kids. So that's always just kind of stood out to me as something I don't know that I would do if I had two kids at home. So... Christina is just, you know, she's always there for our clients. That's great. And you guys do benefits brokerage, if I'm getting that right. And so you do a lot of work to help companies with their HR tool selection in general. And it sounds like Christina sort of runs that for you. Yes, definitely. And Christina is the technology department at EBS. Like we, she's it. So she pretty much handholds clients when they're, you know, not only researching vendors, but once they actually begin vendor selection, she holds her hand through implementation. She's there for them beyond implementation. If they have any issues, she has like these crazy Excel spreadsheets that track all of the issues and, and track the dates that she talked to the client about it. And and specifically what she said to the vendor and what the vendor said. And she's just, she's there throughout the whole process. That's awesome. So uh, it's good to be organized and buying tools and technology. It can be extremely uh, daunting process, especially working across lots of different companies. Um, do you mind right. just sort of diving into like this specific uh, time when she was working with this company? Like what sort of like the problem that was there and what was the sort of process to, to find the right HRIS? Yeah, so, and keep in mind that this is all secondhand story. So um, I wasn't actually there, but from what I understand with this client, she, they were on a really antiquated payroll system. They were still doing paper enrollments, but they were using the system for payroll. And um, they're, a, they're a big manufacturing company. They're a um, couple hundred employees. So, you know, this, this paper thing wasn't quite working for them. And Christina comes in and says, essentially, you need a more robust solution for this. Let's start looking at vendors. So when they got to the vendor selection part, there was kind of a clear front runner, um, but price was sort of an issue for this company. I mean, th their antiquated system was also like 1970s pricing. So they were like, okay, we don't know if we have this much money to spend on this, but we know that we need to find a solution to, to streamline everything. So she ended up basically, um, you know, Christina's MO is just, you know, ask for it. The worst they can do is say no. And um, if they say no, she'll say no, do better. And uh, so they came back with a bunch of concessions and it ended up being $135,000 in concessions from the vendor. Um, and then she asked for more. And she actually went to the CFO in this instance, which I thought was so funny because the CFO you know, we have of, of the vendor. Yes, because we have a pretty close relationship with the rep. I know that she has a very close re relationship with the rep. Um, and so she even like circumvented that relationship and was like, I'm gonna just ask the CFO. And the CFO said, this is the quote that I heard, uh, what you're asking for is unprecedented. And she just like, was like, okay, so what is your answer? <laughs> like, is that a yes? And it ended up being a yes. So she saved the client $350,000 over the next 15 years um, on their HRS spend, just implementing all of these 
you know, perks that this new system has that they just they didn't have with that old payroll vendor. Wow. So just to summarize, they, they basically were on a super antiquated system. They weren't paying anything for it. It sounds like the 1970s pricing was probably pretty low. Um, so they didn't really have the budget to maybe, you know, upgrade to something really, you know, at, at the kind of sticker price. And she was able to get them a system that worked for them. If I remember correctly, they have a predominantly Spanish speaking workforce. So it needed to be multilingual. It needed to have a really mobile friendly interface because most people were not sort of corporate line workers. And so ticked all those boxes. And then the vendor that they selected were, was basically like, hey, it's gonna be 135K a year. And she pushed and pushed and pushed until she got, it sounds like maybe 30 plus thousand dollars off per year. For a yeah, and I don't actually know exactly how much it, how, how much it was ultimately per year. The 135,000 was sort of what she got them to strip away from the various, you know, they, they came at her and the client with this really robust, you know, here's all the different features. And she was like, we don't need that. We already do this. Um, we, you can do better on that. And, and that $135,000 was in that negotiating process. Got it. So it was really a detailed review and understanding for this particular vendor, which she probably knows fairly well. It sounds like she deals with them often, probably for a lot of your clients, like here's the stuff that we don't need that you're charging us for that maybe a, another customer wouldn't have actually known about. And she was able to do that. Yeah. Like translating the, the, the fancy features that they're like, Oh, you definitely need this. And obviously the client's like, Oh, I want that. And she's like, no, you, you hired somebody to do that. You already have somebody on your payroll who does that. Let's not pay for that again. So just helping translate these proposals and contracts for clients is, you know, she, she goes through them pretty, yeah. pretty closely. That's awesome. And do you know, like how it went, like implementation or like the, the customer, like what, what they're up to these days? You know, that's a good question. I think this was within the last year. Um, so from what I understand, implementation went well. Um, but actually I don't, I don't really know much further than that, unfortunately. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, I know your initial nomination was really for just like taking a company that desperately needed something, need to move away from pen and paper and sort of this like old rudimentary system to something that would help propel their business. That was a good fit for the idiosyncratic needs of their business. And then also that they got the right price for, which is as important as anything, especially where you're going to your own CFO and, and saying, hey, we need a significant amount of money for this thing that we haven't had historically. It's going to make our lives much easier. Right. Um, so that's awesome. Um, any other sort of key takeaways you think um, that are worth sharing for people listening to this and thinking, hey, I'm, I'm looking at an HRIS or hey, I'm negotiating a contract coming up. Any last sort of learnings? Yeah, I think the key takeaways that Christina has always made sure to translate to me, because like I said, I'm, I'm in the marketing side, I'm not in the technology side. Um, but Christina is always like, whatever the vendor is offering you, it's too much. They're, you know, they're the salesman, they want you to get all of the features, they want you to bundle, they want you to pay, you know, every possible fee available. Um, and you know, her whole thing is, you know, we're never going to go with the first, we're always going to go, we're going to strip away everything that you don't need. We're going to only pay for the things that you do need. And we're going to fight to get the lowest price for those things that you do need, because they are probably building in a bit of a cushion for, um, for the salesperson. So that's one of the, one, one of the biggest things, one of the other things and something that we learned in the pandemic is, um, paper enrollments and, and, and doing things in paper, it's just not viable, not just because of, not just because of the pandemic, but because, um, you know, you have human error, you have people not filling out forms properly. When you, when you can automate all of these onboarding and enrollment processes, you're just going to have a better output and you're going to be able to reach more employees, especially when they're all remote. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely accelerated 
uh, those sorts of trends. And I think any business can take advantage of just going paperless. Um, it's good for the environment. It's good for process. It's good for audit trails and stuff like that. Yes. So awesome. Well, Mara, thank you so much for your nomination for sort of, you know, sharing some of the insights and, and what happened throughout this process. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me.